Yeah, so here we are. Gibson Les Pauls. Um, you know, they, they made these amazing guitars in the 50s. In the early 60s, they were still making great guitars. They kind of like started to taper off in the late 60s. 70s, there's a bit of an argument as to whether those are any good or not. And in the 80s, they started trying to come claw their way back. They, um, I think in the early 90s, they formed a custom shop and now they are producing pretty much instruments as good as the ones they were making in the 50s. And I truly believe that because I've actually played a lot of um, current Gibson um, custom shop guitars and I've got to say they are really, really good, you know, so well done Gibson. Now, um, first of all, let's talk about the philosophical question. Should you be playing a guitar, a copy of a Gibson? Um, you know, it's going to hurt the brand. Should you be loyal? Well, my opinion is this. Um, Les Paul is now dead. Okay, his family is still alive, but Les Paul is dead. A lot of the workers that made those 50s instruments that we all know and love, they are now dead or they're retired. They're no longer working there. I know that some of them went off to form another company, Heritage, um, using some of the original machines and some of the original workers. But, you know, the whole that Gibson company, the, the human element of that Gibson company is now no, no longer. It's just a legacy. Now it's a corporation, it's a brand, and it's got a board of directors, all of whom are very rich. So personally, I'm not, in, you know, I'm not loyal to those rich um, board members or the brand. I don't care. It doesn't mean anything to me. So I just want an instrument um, that's going to give me the sound of Peter Green or Eric Clapton in the Blues Breakers, or Mick Taylor um, in the Blues Breakers, or you know Dwayne Allman. Um, I just want a guitar that's going to give me those tones, you know, um, and this is it. You know, I've played hundreds of Les Pauls. Now, I'm not saying you should all go out and buy one of these ones. It's an ESP Les Paul copy. I'm not saying you should do that because even with the ESP guitars, I've played a few other ones um, and they weren't very good. Bear in mind, these are a three and a half thousand pound instrument. OK, so um, it's not a cheap instrument, but not all of these sound good. Some of them are as dead as a dodo and some of them are okay and this particular one is outstanding so um, I think it's it's a combination of four bits of wood and pickups that's what makes the Gibson and Les Paul sound good it's, so it's a combination of the mahogany neck the rosewood board the maple cap the mahogany back you know the, the maple cap is really important it's got to be hard wood you know it's got to be really hard all of this wood except the maple cap is from Honduras and um, the maple cap is a hard rock maple um, cap. So you don't want a soft sycamore uh, maple top. You know, that's one thing you want to be checking out, you know. Also, a big, big percentage. Possibly more of the sound comes from the pickups than does the actual guitar. But of course, the two things actually influence each other. So having good pickups that fit the guitar, you know, not, they might be amazing pickups, but they might not be amazing pickups in this guitar. Um, and also you've got to think about your amplifier. So, you know, um, you know, I'm using sort of dumbbell copies and I'm using projector film sound amps. So these pickups sound great in that, that situation, but maybe the, you know, you need to change your pickups depending on your amplifier, you know? So that, there's a lot of variables here. Um, capacitors. And these are the capacitors that I like. You can see they're the green ones. Um, I just like them because they're green. Um, but they kind of sound okay, so there you go. Um, you know, so all these kind of things are going to work together, and your own hands, your fingertips, your the, the way you you play that note, your nuances, playing that note is also going to make um, a big difference. So it's a lot of a lot of things. Anyway, let's get back to the uh, the argument. So I'm saying to you, you know, should you be just playing Gibsons or should you be playing copies and replicas if they're better? Well, I don't think, you know, like I said, I think, um, here's, here's the thing. Epiphone make Les Paul copies. Now these Les Paul copies are really good. You know, I would be quite happy with an Epiphone Les Paul. You know, you give me an Epiphone Les Paul copy, I'm going to make it sound pretty much as good as this, maybe a little bit, maybe not quite as good, but it's going to be near, it's going to be nearly there, you know. Because, you know, it's all in the fingers. The amplifier and the fingers are a huge part of, of the guitar sound, you know. Um, it's not just the guitar. The guitar does help. But it's also, you know, your playing style. What can you play on it? 
And I think this is where a lot of people get hung up. You know, they, um, I see on forums with the replicas, let's talk about what a copy is and what a replica is. A copy for me is something made in a factory that's made to look like a Les Paul. So, for example, this is an ESP copy. Um, in Japan, you get Tokai, you get Cruise, Bachao, so you get lots of different makes. You know, there's loads of makes, in fact. Um, and they're copies of Les Pauls, they're made in a factory. They didn't design it, they copied Les, Gibson Les Paul design and they're churning them out. Now, ESP, this, this costs a lot of money, you know, this is three and a half, four, four thousand pounds. It's um, a quality instrument, almost handmade. Um, I think it's a CNC machine to cut it out, but every, everything else was hand sanded and hand put together. So, um, they really take a pride in what they do. So, you know, I'm quite happy to play this, you know, and put my name to this guitar because it, it's, it is a work of art for me. You know, this is what it is, you know. Replicas are normally made by one guy or woman and in a shed or a lockup or something like that. And the whole ethos is to try and get a, the vibe of a, of a real Les Paul. Now, some of these guys can, can get the look so accurate that it's quite possible, um, and I think this has actually been proven, that some of these replicas are doing the rounds as real Les Pauls and people are trading them as a real 59, when in fact they were made in somebody's um, garden shed um, somewhere in England. <laughs> you know, this is actually, um, I've heard it's actually true, so I don't want to go into details here, but anyway. Um, the point being is that these replica guys can get it really, really close, and um, I'm not going to name any names because maybe, you know, I'll have some death um, threats against me if I call out any people. <laughs> but let's just say, you know, they, these guys are really, really good at what they do. Now, my argument is this. The, ten, the kind of people that kind of buy these replica Les Pauls, you know, not, I'm not talking about the copies, I'm talking about the replicas, which I normally go for like six, seven thousand pounds. The kind of people that buy these Les Pauls generally wouldn't really... Um, you know, maybe they're buying it for the look. I don't know why they're buying it, but they, they, whether they were playing an Epiphone Les Paul or this seven thousand pound replica, they're not going to sound any better. Their playing style is such that you know whether they're playing um, you know an Epiphone worth three hundred pounds or a seven thousand Les Paul, it's not going to make much difference. They would be better to spend that seven thousand pounds on guitar lessons. And I don't want to insult anybody by saying this, but. Really, if, you, if you're going to spend £7,000 on a Les Paul and you can't really play it to a great level that it deserves, what's the point? What is the point, you know? Okay, I would understand if you want to hang it up on the wall and you just want to look at it and then show it to your friends and look at it yourself when you're, you're having a cup of coffee in the morning. You know, that's like a real Les, 50s Les Paul, that's, you know, and you want to hold it. Yeah, okay, I, I can understand that, but if you're not a great player, you know, if, if you're a beginner player, so let's just say you're a novice beginner player, and you've got the £7,000 replica, what is the point? You know, is anybody going to hear it? Are you, are you recording on an album? You know, are you, are, you, are you doing gigs? You know, are you playing to 12,000 people? You know, or even are you playing to 200 people? You know, uh, you know who's going to, what's the point? You know, um, so if there, you know, if, if you have a valid reason for having this £7,000 instrument um, replica, then fair enough, I understand it. But from, from what I see on the forums, the kind of guys that are buying these, and this is no offence to anyone, the kind of guys that are buying these replica Les Pauls, it's not going to make a difference whether they've got an Epiphone in their hands or a replica. So really, just to conclude with this, this coffee chat, I, I just want to say to you guys, have a few questions. When you're buying a Les Paul, have a few questions. Um, you know, what are the woods? What are the woods made? You know, where, are they seasoned woods? You know, is it like going to... Are the woods going to kind of crack and, um, you know, the, the neck's going to go crazy and, you know, think about that, you know, if, if Japan are making instruments where they're using seasoned wood and it's the same price as a Gibson, then buy a Japanese guitar, you know, because Gibson should get their act together and, and, and season the woods properly, you know. Secondly, the maple cap, is it hard? Is it hard? Is it, is it, you know, can you put your fingernail through it, you know? If you can, go, go and buy a copy. You know, if Gibson aren't making hard rock maple caps, go and buy a copy, you know. Because the whole the whole tone of a Les Paul is the marriage between the mahogany and the maple top, and that needs to be hard, you know, for it to resonate well against the mahogany, you know. So that's another thing, you know. If if Gibson aren't doing that, then go and buy a copy or buy, go and buy a replica, you know. Um, you know, if if a Gibson custom um, guitar has got all those attributes, then by all means, you know, it's Gibson custom shot all the way for me, you know. 
Um, now, the, the advantage of buying a Gibson, obviously, is that number one, you know, it's not a copy. It looks cool, you know, it's it's a Gibson, you know, it's a cool, it's like wearing a pair of Nike shoes, you know, it's kind of a cool name, I guess, you know, um, even though I don't wear Nike shoes. But anyway, um, that's, that's, and also another thing is you can sell the Gibson pretty easily, let's face it. It's not going to be hard to sell a Gibson that's poor. For me, selling this, you know, um, it's going to be hard because, you know, who wants an ESP made Les Paul? You know, nobody wants one. You know, maybe a few handful of people want one. So having a Gibson Les Paul, if you, if you don't like it and you want to trade it and, you know, keep trading it, it that's, that's one of the advantages. So a few things to think about there. Let me know your thoughts because, you know, are you guys saying, no, it's got to be a Gibson because, you know, I really support the brand and, you know, it's made in America, you know, we need to support, you know, fair enough, that's a good argument, you know. Um, or... Are you saying that, no, I play, um, you know, Japanese copies. I think Japanese got amazing work ethic. They really take a pride in what they do. And fair enough, it's a copy, but they're really in the tradition of, you know, making a great instrument. So fair enough. And then tell me about the replicas. You know, do you think the replica make makers, you know, do you think it's worth buying a replica over a Gibson custom shop? You know, what, what is the advantages? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And we're going to upload some more videos today, so um, keep an eye out for the guitar show. Take care.